Hey guys, welcome to my super simple substance painter tutorial. This tutorial assumes that you know nothing about substance painter, that you know little to nothing about modeling and texturing, and that you have some experience in Photoshop so you're comfortable with brushes, layers, and masks. All right, let's get started. The goal of this tutorial is to give you a brief overview of some of the basic tools in substance painter. If you'd like to follow along, you can download the model from my gum road in the description below. Once you've done that, we can set up our document. First things first, let's pull in our model. After that, at the top here, it'll say template, select template. Scroll down to PBR metallic roughness. You'll use that for probably 100% of the projects you're doing, so you won't ever have to change that again. For document resolution, I'm gonna use 512 because uh, it's more than enough for what we're doing on this project. And I don't have a graphics card, and some reason OpenGL is working better for me, but you can probably leave it on DirectX. So once our model's loaded in, you'll see on the left we've got a 3D view, and on the right we've got a 2D view, but it's really hard to see what's going on, so let's talk about navigation. In order to move around in Substance Painter, you're going to hold Alt, and then left mouse button is going to rotate, right mouse button is going to zoom out and zoom in, and middle mouse is going to paint. Same is true for our 2D view. So middle mouse, right mouse is going to zoom out and in, left mouse is going to uh, rotate, and if we want to reset this, we can just hold Alt, Shift, and then left click and drag down, and that'll reset that for us. Same is true for the 3D view, so Alt, Shift, drag down. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, in Substance Painter, you don't actually paint on the 3D model. You paint on a 2D unwrapped map of the model, and if you'd like to know more about that, there's tons of great videos online. We're not going to get into it here because we're just going to keep this super focused and get done super quick. All right, so let's just look at our 3D model. In order to do that, you can press F2. If you want to see the 2D view, you can press F3. And if you want to see split again, F1. Let's hop over to F2. And all these panels are modular, so if you get them moved around or if one of them disappears on you, you can just go up to Window, hit Reset UI, and it'll bring it back to Home Base. Um, down here, we've got a lot of materials. And in order to set this up so it's a little smoother for what we're doing, you can just select Brushes. And uh, now let's get into layers, masks, and painting. All right, layers and masks. So first, how do you bring in a fill layer? It starts you off with a paint layer right away, so we can get rid of that. Right here, this fill icon is how you create a fill layer. Uh, it's gonna start you off with all of these material settings. We don't need any of those. So you can deselect all these, and it'll simplify our options here. We can select a color. And then let's bring in another fill layer so we can talk about masks a little bit. Same deal, get rid of all of these and pick a color that'll stand out a little bit. All right, now that we've got that there, in order to add a mask, just click this drop down, select whatever kind of mask you want. So the great thing is it's a texturing program, so it starts you off with all sorts of crazy brushes that you can use to mask off your colors. Something to note is that when you paint in Substance Painter, you can't actually edit the colors. You can't select them and do any, any broad changes. So if you have something that you want to be able to come back and change later, it's best to use it as a fill layer so that later you can come back and change whatever you want in it. Um, they can be a little finicky sometimes because you have to make sure that you select the right thing. So if you ever get stuck here and you're like, I'm on a fill layer, why does it look like I'm painting? It's because you've selected the mask. In mask, uh, in the mask area, you can only use black and white. So hitting X will bring up the black brush and then X again, bring up the white, just like Photoshop. So in that way, it's really similar to Photoshop. That's all there really is to mask. They're not super complicated. You can do a lot more, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So if we're doing some basic painting, that's all you need to know. And uh, yeah, just have fun exploring. All right, so we deleted our fill layers. Now let's talk about painting. So you can add a paint layer by selecting the paintbrush. Now, the paint layer is the only layer you can paint on. If you noticed earlier, when you tried to paint in your fill layer, it didn't work. So now that we've got this, we have to do the same thing and get rid of our height, roughness, metal, and normal. And then we can come down and select our color and just start painting. If you want to change some settings, up here in the upper left, you've got all of your options. Right here is Lazy Mouse, so you can increase and decrease the distance there. 
Um, if you'd like some shortcuts, you can press Control and dragging left and right will increase and decrease the flow. Up and down will rotate it for those more stylized brushes. If you hold Control and uh, right mouse and scroll up and down, you can change the feathering and left and right will increase and decrease the size. For quick shortcuts to things like the eraser and smudge tool, uh, one is your brush, two is your eraser, and then five is the smudge tool. It doesn't work super well, uh, like I said, because my graphics card is struggling a little bit, but you can kind of see what's going on. It probably works way better on your machine. And then uh, if you want to use the eyedropper tool, it's actually P for picker. Um, Oh, but you have to be in the brush. So P. We don't have another material, so it's going to have trouble finding. Oh, there we go. Make some of the white. But if you select out here, it'll just select the last color that you're using because technically there's no material there. So you have to have an actual color. We need another layer or maybe another pink color. Let's see. Oh, oh and this is good. So I just press B because Photoshop B. Sometimes you'll do that. If this ever happens to you, just come to this upper right corner and then select material again, and it'll bring you back right to what you're doing. So let's try P, blue, P, there you go. Um, so that's kind of the basics of brushes. There's a ton of brushes to play with. Mixing these crazy brushes with different masks uh, can produce a ton of different results. So just have fun, see what you can come up with, and just enjoy the process. All right, so you finished, and you can't wait to show your family and friends your intricate work of art. Exporting is fairly straightforward. Just go to File, Export Textures, and right away these base settings will be fine. You'll probably need help creating a material to show it off in whatever program you're throwing it into. There's tons of videos for every program, but if there's one specifically that you need, feel free to leave it in the comments section and I'd love to help you out. Substance Painter is a super powerful program and because of that, it can be a little overwhelming. So I hope this video helped you get kickstarted. If you're looking for a more in-depth overview, Flip Normals has a great video, and there's a few others that I'll link in the description below. If you're looking for more stuff from me, give me a like, maybe a subscribe, and let me know what you're struggling with. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, see you guys. Hey guys, welcome to my super simple substance painter tutorial. This tutorial assumes a lot of things. You know what happens when you assume.